Hey everybody, going to make a quick video on how to bring your DAZ assets out of DAZ and export them to be used in Lens Studio. So as you can see here, I have a 3D model of a burrito. <laughs> it's a burrito, right? You can find these in a grocery store. But I exported this burrito and brought it into DAZ Studio. Now this is not hard. It, it took a lot of figuring out on my own because practically no one that I could find was doing this sort of thing so I had to learn a lot of it on my own um, in this video that I'm making here is basically for you because I didn't have this uh, I had to figure it out on my own so uh, let's try it so basically like I was saying it's not very difficult it has to do with basically limitations uh, and configuration settings basically um, but I'm going to show you all that, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to get rid of the burrito, okay? So we're going to take this uh, box of cereal, okay? Now the main thing you have to know when you export out of DAZ, your textures cannot be over a certain limit. For example. In Lens Studio, when you try to uh, import a 3D model and the texture is too large, it will give you an error message, so you can't use it. So it's better off to just take care of it now uh, while in DAZ, uh, so there will be no problems later on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So for example, this box of cornflakes here. This is going to go and look at... I'm sorry if you hear my dog snoring right underneath me. Um, this box of cereal, what's it called? It's called uh, Label 3M. Label 3M. So this is it right here. So let's take a look at it. How big is it? Uh, we have to open with Photoshop. And the reason why I open with Photoshop is because it's, I know for a fact it's too big. I just want to show you. So, uh, image size. Now, this is 4,000 by 4,000. Now, if we were to use this, it would not work. So, what I do is, while it's large, if I want to alter the texture in any way, I'm already in Photoshop, I can just put whatever I want on the box, just right here. And while it's large, when I'm done with that, I just resize the image to 2,000 by 2000. That's in this particular case. If you have something smaller, obviously you don't want it to go and make it bigger or it'll lose quality. But then again, if you had it smaller, then you really wouldn't need to do this in the first place other than, you know, Photoshop the texture. So, whatever. So, anyway, I'm going to make this 2000 by 2000 and then I'm going to save it. Now, this is very important. There's a cache issue here. So when you save something, and let's say you change it and save it as the same name, the cache won't show you the update, updated texture. It'll show you the old one because it's in the cache. So it's better off to just name it something new every time. Plus, on top of that, we don't want to damage our original file. We don't want it completely altered forever. So I'm just going to name it something new. So save as, and then usually I'll just go and put it to or whatever. So that's that. Boom. So in here, I'll go and I'll find that 3M2 that I just made, which is right here, and I changed it. Now, it doesn't look like anything changed, but it did. The texture is now within the, the, the limits of Lens Studio, which is under 20 by 2048 by 2048 resolution. So, pain in the ass, but that's just the way it is. So now it's time to export. Um, now the export here, it's not hard. <laughs> as long as your resolution is under 2048 by 2048, uh, and you just meet certain criteria, you're pretty much good to go. So I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's export. So we're gonna export here. Now I'm going to go ahead and find, um, I make it in a good practice of mine to always make a new folder. Um, that's just me because I'm an organized freak like that. So I made a new folder called Cornflakes and then I'm just going to name the 3D model 
ZF, cornflakes, whatever. So I'm going to leave this up here for a moment. Uh, these are the export settings that work for me. Now, I've heard that uh, FBX 2014 output binary might work, and it has worked uh, for other people who eventually got into doing this from Daz. Actually, they were the support team. I was trying to get help. <laughs> but they told me FBX 2014 would work. I don't care what they say. FBX 2012 binary worked for me. So that's what I used. Um, these are your settings right here. If you need to, pause the video so you can get everything exactly the way uh, I have it here. Moving on. So I'm going to hit accept and it's going to export the uh, 3D model. So now we're done with Daz. Daz is done. Goodbye, Daz. No. So we're going to jump here into Lens Studio and we're going to make a new project off a template. I guess we're going to do a static object. Okay, whatever. So I'm loading the template up. Now I don't have to use a template, it's just something I do out of habit, I guess. And mainly because the world object controller is already populated here and I don't have to go and manually put it in. That's mainly why I do it. So get that stupid trophy out of the way. Remove me, remove me. So now we're going to import our 3D model. So I'm going to go down here to resources and click add new and import the files. And I'm going to go and search for my cornflakes 3d model which let me see here there's cornflakes and there it is so we're going to click open and i'm not going to touch any of that i'm just going to hit import it's doing its thing i guess yep yeah, it did it. it doesn't it's not showing it for some reason oh well so it's in the resources and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to uh, objects and I'm just going to drop it as a child of the world explorer. Why am I not seeing this? Hang on. And of course my stupid lens studio crashed. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to pause the video and I'll start it up again when I restart lens studio. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> I'm back, sorry about that. Which I'm actually kind of glad this happened because it made me realize that I didn't do a certain thing. Now, when I exported the cornflakes, I just had it like this and I hit export, you know, whatever. Uh, and I had it like this and I didn't realize that it was not selected. See, export says not selected. So look at it right there, it says not selected. So if I select it and then I do it again, then it says export yes. So <laughs> very, very rookie mistake. Uh, I don't even know why that got past me, but it did. So make sure it's selected, you export the correct way. Um, I re-exported re it and um, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, almost positive that it will work so let's go back into the resources and import the file so we're gonna find our cornflakes 3d model cornflakes and there is and you remember how I said earlier there's a cache issue so if I would have renamed if I would not have renamed it and just left it cf.fbx it wouldn't have did nothing it would not have changed even though the CF2 is clearly larger than the, CF, the original CF. So it is likely that this will work. So we click open, just import it, and voila, there it is. So with that, I mean, this is a, under the assumption that you know how to work um, Lens Studio. So this is a static object. Obviously, you can't walk around it just yet because it's not attached to the world object controller. So now if you were to send this to your Snapchat as a preview, you could literally walk around it. But anyway, this is how you do it. Uh, I hope this clears up any confusion for any of you who have been frustrated trying to get your assets out of Daz and into Lint Studio. Uh, I know if that were me in that situation, it would certainly help me. So say thanks. Give a subscribe, a thumbs up, a comment, whatever. You know all the good stuff. Thanks for watching.